so right now, uh, if you look at the overweight and uh, obesity, we're talking about 20% uh, prevalence of obesity in our adolescents and young kids, right? So one in five young kid is obese. If you start looking at adults, uh, we're talking about obesity of 40%, obesity, not overweight. If you look at overweight and obesity together, 75%, uh, three in four of us uh, are overweight. Uh, we have a whole bunch of folks that are walking around about 40% with a total cholesterol of greater than 200, uh, despite of the fact that there are plenty of cheap uh, therapies available to treat uh, uh, hyperlipidemia. Hypertension, I mean, this is sort of really uh, depressing that no matter what we do, I'm, I'm seeing sort of graphs like this for, for the past 20 years. Uh, hypertension is almost ubiquitous uh, as you grow older, older population, 80, 90% have hypertension. Uh, but if you look at sort of the four bars that, you know, you have hypertension, you have been diagnosed with it, you have been treated, and then you have been treated to goal, uh, we are still stuck at about 20% or so. There are some race, gender variation there as well, but overall arching is that 80% of the patients are not uh, treated to goal. I'm a heart failure doctor, so I'll show you sort of some data on, on heart failure, but I mean, th these are some generic comments. My comments are true for lipids, uh, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, CKD. For all of those things, you can make the same uh, comments. So, uh, I mean, you know, heart failure is common. It's growing, half ref, half PEF. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we know that heart failure hospitalizations are, are growing as well, uh, both in men and women. Uh, so it's a big epidemiologic uh, problem. And this is a disease that has horrible outcomes. You're talking about 45, 50% risk of mortality within five years of diagnosis. Each hospitalization leads to higher risk of hospitalization. So you meet all the criteria, common disease, growing disease, very costly disease, very poor outcomes. The question is, are we just impotent uh, against this disease? And the answer is absolutely not. If you look at the four therapies, uh, uh, RNA beta blocker, MRA, and SGLT2 inhibitor combined in patients with HEFREP, you're talking about a relative risk reduction for mortality of about 70%, absolute risk reduction for about 25% for two-year treatment with an NNT of four. I mean, we're talking about incredibly potent therapy uh, if you were to increase the outcome. And what's the composite benefit? So if you look at the red line, the red line is not no therapy in HEFREP. Red line is on ACE inhibitor and beta blocker. So this can tell you how bad the outcomes are, that if there were no ACE inhibitor beta blocker, it will really just plummet. And then you move from the red line to blue line. If you move from ACE inhibitor beta blocker to ARNI beta blocker, MRA, and an SGLT2 inhibitor, and we're talking about an average increase in survival of almost six years, six years. Even uh, if you're mid-50s, even octogenarians, you're talking about increasing survival by one to two years. Uh, so, common disease, growing disease, huge cost to the society, high mortality rate, and have incredibly effective therapies. And these are not high-tech therapies like, you know, gene deletion and all that. There. So these are like just sort of four pills that, that we need to give to the patients. What we found in this registry, and this is a close to 4,000 or 3,500 patients, 75% of the patients were either on one or two drugs, ACE inhibitor or beta blocker or both, but not triple therapy. Uh, with no absolute or relative contraindication or any given reason. And cost is absolutely not an issue because ACE inhibitor, beta blockers, and MRA are all three generic. All three are generic. And yet 75% of the patients were not on triple therapy, let aside uh, uh, a quadruple therapy. Now, we have done a ton of study. You know, high versus low blood pressure made no difference when we came back after a year. Uh, made absolutely no difference. Those, of, I mean, we have looked at it in every different way and all of that is published. And this is not particular to heart failure if you look at the diabetes care and you look at the comprehensive cardiovascular risk production, uh, risk uh, management, lipid management, uh, CKD management, and glucose control. Again, less than 10% of the people get that, uh, get that care. The other thing which is really uh, 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 perverse in the healthcare system is this issue of patient centricity. So, Patient experience is really important. But, but when I go to these sort of meetings, you know, the, the whole thing is about sort of, you know, getting warm food and not cold food and good food and parking being close to the hospital and all that kind of stuff, which is all important. I'm not saying that this is not coming from the right place or all important. But the number one thing that our patients are wanting, the number one thing, is to have nothing to do with us. 
They don't want to come to clinic. They don't want to come to hospital. They don't want to go to nursing home. They just want to live outside as little contact with us. And the only way we will do that is by treating their chronic comorbidities. The only way, or, or even early risk factor modifications so that they don't develop, or chronic comorbidities. So we need to sort of think about this patient centricity a little bit different uh, uh, than, than maybe, maybe sometimes we think. Uh, so, so, so we'll see sort of what, what, what happens. I mean, I, I think that a lot of the, doc, the jobs that doctors are doing will go to sort of non-doctors, and a lot of the jobs that non-doctors are doing will, will sort of go to, to, to robots, and this is gonna happen in my lifetime. And, and I'm not young, but this is gonna happen in my lifetime. What I don't know is whether we'll reach singularity in my lifetime or not. Uh, but again, I sort of welcome that world. Uh, some people are sort of really afraid of that. I sort of welcome that world. But even before we go to those extremes, the, the use of, of computerized systems for healthcare uh, will become a, a reality. I can tell you, as a heart failure doctor, you know, my, my wife is an internist, a geriatrician, who sort of reminds me every time that, that don't think too highly of yourself because you know one disease. And I can tell you at this point, I cannot keep up with heart failure literature. It's, it's physically impossible. I'm not talking about cardiology literature. I cannot keep up with heart failure literature, let aside cardiology literature, let aside the whole medicine literature, and to say uh, that computers are not gonna do a better job at, uh, uh, than, than us is, is, in my opinion, a, a little bit naive. I talked about the role of healthcare system. I think that uh, we focus a lot on traditional discovery science, but I think we need to have different nimble models for discovery science. Then this whole issue of population management science and implementation science.